Hello, I'm Lucy from Vicax and I'm here today to review Transcription by Kate Atkinson. I had been looking forward to reading Kate Atkinson's newest novel pretty much since the moment that I knew it was on the way. I have read her in the past and really, really enjoyed her. Um, she has written a lot of novels actually. Um, and I haven't read them all, but the ones that I have read have really um, sort of stuck with me and hit a chord. So I was looking forward to this one already. And then I saw the cover, folks. Look, it's a flamingo. And I knew that it was going to be kind of a war story. So um, I was really drawn to this cover, partly flamingo, partly to see how on earth they tied a flamingo into a war story. This is a book set partly in 1940s. Um, or 1940, and partly in the 1950s. And it follows um, one central character called Juliet. And when we first meet her, actually, it's 1980. And on the very first page, she's hit by a car. And she's pretty sure that she's gonna be a goner. And of course, her mind casts back to the things she has done in her life. First of all, we go meet her in 1940, when she was 18 years old and newly orphaned. And she is recruited, sort of by accident, she really doesn't know what she's getting herself in for, to be a spy for MI5. And at first, she is really excited by this prospect. It's an adventure, it's fun. The war is kind of still uh, pretty abstract to her, and to a lot of people in Britain, it's far away. But increasingly, as time goes on, she is sort of drawn deeper and deeper into the sort of murky underworld of spying, if there's ever anything other than a murky underworld. And the adventure and the fun elements seem to trickle away and are replaced with something much, much darker. Fast forward to 1950 and she is no longer in the service. She is working um, for the BBC, actually, in the children's department, which she finds um, both farcical and terribly unfulfilling. And of course, what happens then is her past kind of comes back to haunt her. At first, she's not really sure it's, it's actually doing it. And um, the flamingo in question also comes into play because the flamingo is a code name for someone who crosses her path and sort of sets in, in motion a chain of events um, which bring her back to her past. And then the narrative sort of switches one way and another throughout. And actually the flamingo sort of becomes a metaphor for the, for the novel's themes in general because the more that Juliet sort of ponders about why they've called um, this man the flamingo and whether in fact flamingos are or are not flightless birds it sort of draws her into questioning her own past and whether she is able to escape from it whether she's able to ever really fly away from the things that she has done now was this a good book it was a good book folks it certainly was and Juliet for me was the absolute reason it was so good from the very, very first page, she is such an engaging character. She has this energetic um, outlook on the world, but also one that is, is so incredibly cynical. It is just brilliantly cynical. I loved it. She has this stoical British gallows humour, I guess, really, which she just applies to every scenario and the gap between sort of what she says um, to her superiors and what she's actually thinking is just utterly, utterly brilliant. Humour plays a really big part in this novel actually. It's one of its real charms and I think it's something that Atkinson generally does very, very well. It's, it's got similarities to her other novels actually as a bit of an aside, so that, those time jump elements to it, but also this sort of knowing humour that runs through it, but done in incredibly precise and original ways, both through the general prose, but also the dialogue. It's really, um, it's got this humour and this warmth that just elevates it, I think, above sort of so much prose that is out there. It's not to say, however, that because there's humour, there's also not sort of an emotional depth that sometimes you don't necessarily automatically think come together. And actually, as the story progresses and Juliet uh, moves from sort of this 
feeling like she's in a real adventure into much sort of darker, grittier territory. Her emotions are challenged, and ours are challenged too, to a degree. We we fear for what she's what she's going to do and what's going to be done to her, and it's done with really great empathy, I think, actually, which is a balance that you know sets again sets Atkinson apart a little bit because she has got um, the skills to balance the humour and the empathy and the scariness of what's essentially really a, a spy thriller. I guess. Compared to some of her other novels though, it isn't as ambitious in its scope as say Life After Life or A God in Ruins. It isn't as uh, profound I think either really. It does have um, that empathy there but it doesn't have sort of the core emotional wallop I think that those other novels had. What it does have in abundance is just fun. You know that Atkinson had the best time writing this. There's all sorts of knowing nods to sort of other uh, literary cliches. You know, if other people had written them, you would question it maybe, but you know that everything in this novel is deliberate and she's sort of poking fun at all sorts of things from the literary establishment and sort of the creative establishment when she talks about how the BBC works, right through to elements of the war. So how increasingly, utterly farcical the whole sort of spying scenario becomes. Farcical and, you know, sorry, really unnerving sort of companion side by side, um, which is incredibly, incredibly hard to do, I think. So is it worth the hype? I really do think it is. If you are looking for something that is as ambitious as books like Life After Life were, this probably isn't, isn't sort of on that register, but it is just done with such Im immense skill and playfulness to the writing that it is just thoroughly, thoroughly entertaining. And I enjoyed it from the first page till the very, very last. Uh, I would absolutely recommend it to people who like um, the other other books by Kate Atkinson, but also people who like a good adventure, but with straightforward prose, a heavy plot um, that drives it, but with really engaging characters, in a, written in a way that is accessible, but um, intelligent, I guess, really. So they are the kind of people, I think, or the kind of readers that I think would enjoy this novel. If you have read it, if you are reading it, because I know so many people out there have got their hands on this book at the moment, I would love to know your thoughts. Um, so please do share them with me in the comments below. And also do check out bookaxe.com and the apps, they're completely free. And I shall see you soon. Thanks for watching, bye.